Now we're going to have two types of factoring. We're going to have a factoring using our GCF and factoring of quadratic equation. So let's start with the easy one, um, factoring using the greatest common factor. Now, in factoring, um, it's difficult because you need to have a mastery of the times table to be able to factor polynomials. And I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step, uh, procedures on how to pick your correct greatest common factor. However, you don't need to do all these steps. I'm just showing you the visual. And uh, the strategy here is for you to be able to be familiar with the times table so you don't need to resort to this expansion. So I'm just going to expand some of the numerical values here so you can fully understand what GCF is. So I have first set of numbers. I have 2, 4, and 6. If I'm going to list all the factors of 2, 4, and 6, for 2, I have 1, 2. For 4, I have 1, 2, and 4. And for 6, I have factors for 1, 2, 3, and 6. So each one of them, can, when you multiply them with each other, or two numbers to each other, it will give you 2, four or six respectively. Now, we need to find the greatest common factor or the highest number that could divide two, four, and six. And in this case, you will see that two is common to two, four, and six, and it is the highest factor for each one of them. That is why our GCF for two, four, and six is positive two. Now, this is for a uh, set of numbers or set of real numbers. Now I'm showing you set of expressions. I have variables mx squared and mxy squared and xyz. If I expand this, um, these um, variables or these terms, for mx squared they have m and two x's. For mxy squared they have one m, one x, and two y's. And for x, y, z, I have x, y, z. And to check what my greatest common factor is, all of them has x, 1, 2, 3. So that means my highest or my greatest common factor for these terms will be x. So that's how you find your GCF when you are given an expression. Now in my third example, I'm going to combine real number and variables together to form these terms. So now I have 15xy squared, 30x squared y, and 9xy squared. If I expand it for 15, I have factors of 1, 3, 5, and 15, and 1x and 2y's. And for 30x squared y, I have 1, 2, 15, 5, 3, 10, and 30, and 2x's and 1y. And for 9xy squared, I have 139xyy. Now I need to find the greatest common factor for each term. So for 15, the greatest number that could divide 15, 30, and 9 is 3, because that's the common number for all these three terms. And for my variables, for my x's, the greatest common factor is the lowest exponent. So I only have 1x. And for my y, the lowest exponent is this one. So that will be my greatest common factor for y. So the GCF for these um, terms right here is 3xy. So now that I showed you what GCF is, we're ready to um, factor polynomials using this uh, procedure or using this technique. So I have six examples here. I'm going to start with 2x plus 8. So 2x plus 8, my greatest common factor for 2x plus 8 is 2. Now, if I divide 2 and 2x, I'll get x here, and if I divide 2 and 8, I'll have 4. Now, factoring using GCF is basically the distributive property in reverse. So you're just reversing it. So if you reverse it, this will be your factor. Now, if you want to make sure that your answer or your factor is correct, if you distribute 2 to x and 2 to 4, you'll have 2x plus 8. So that's how you would know that you are performing the correct factoring method. So... Just reverse your distributive property and you'll have your factor and then distribute it again to check whether you have a correct factor. And for number two, I have 9y minus 3 and my greatest common factor here is 3. So pull out a 3 in 9y, I have 3y. 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. So my factor is 3 times 3y minus 1. And if I distribute 3 to 3y, it's 9y. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And for number 3, I have 5x plus 15y minus 25. My GCF is 5. And for my variables, it will just stay the same because my last number here, or my last term, doesn't have any variable. So if you pull out a 5 for each term, I have 5 outside and x plus 3y minus 5 inside.
Number five, I have 12m squared y minus 5y squared z. My greatest common factor is just y because there's no common factor for 12 and 5. I don't have an m on this side and I don't have a z on the first term and the only common term for them is y to the first power. So pull out a y and you'll have 12m squared minus 5yz. And for the last example, I have 144abc plus 24a squared b cubed c to the fifth. My greatest common factor is 24abc. If you pull it out or divide it with 144abc, you'll get 6 divided to 24a squared b cubed c5, you'll have ab squared c to the fourth. And these are some examples of factoring method using the greatest common factor.